Joining us now is Dr. Patricia Crown. She is a distinguished professor of anthropology at the University of New Mexico. Is it a surprise to us that the Chacoans had chocolate? It was a lovely research surprise to discover this. But in other ways, we already knew that they had access to other items from Mesoamerica, and so it, it fits, it makes a lot of sense that they would have gotten chocolate as well. Chaco Canyon is located in northwestern New Mexico and was occupied from at least 10,000 years ago, really to the present day. The time period that we're talking about is from about the late 800s up into the 1100s, and particularly the time between 950 and 1150 AD. During that time period, our research has shown that the populations living in Chaco, who are called ancestral pueblos, had chocolate beverages that they drank. Initially, I was interested in looking at cylinder jars, which are a kind of ceramic vessel. They're about 10 inches tall and about four inches wide on average. Different archeologists had speculated that they might have been ceramic hand drums, that you could put a skin over the top and maybe some water inside to change the pitch and beat on the drum. Or they might have been used to store valuable objects. And so there was a question about how they were being used and I was interested in trying to solve that. Still um, no mind or thought toward chocolate at this point. <laughs> not at all. And then one day I talked to a Mayan archeologist who also researched cylinder jars in the Maya area. And she said that down there they were used for drinking chocolate. And I asked if she had done residue analysis, expecting her to say yes, that's how they found out. And she said no, uh, actually they found out because it says it on them. The Maya had writing and so right on the vessels it said this is for drinking chocolate. <laughs> this is for drinking chocolate, exactly. And a sort of light bulb went off in my head and I thought, we know in the Chaco area they had scarlet macaws, which are birds that come from the Mesoamerican tropics. Chocolate comes from that same area. If they can bring a live bird up, surely they could bring some chocolate up. It's about 1,200 miles from Chaco to the nearest tree that grew cacao. Mm -hmm. the, the chocolate comes from the Theobroma cacao tree, and so it is a very long distance. Yeah. You know, when you think of ancient cultures or, you know, way back in history, and we're talking that Mesoamerican period, I guess my thought is I'm not thinking about somebody enjoying a, a drink of chocolate, but why not? At this point, we don't actually know exactly how much they had or how often they had it. Um, we do know that the cylinder jars were at least at times used for drinking chocolate. And in Chaco, it may be that the only certain individuals had access to the chocolate, that it wasn't everybody who could eat it, um, which is a shame. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> what is the evidence? Primary evidence is what's called organic residues. We find them by taking broken pieces of pottery, we call them sherds in archaeology, and taking uh, fragments that are about the size of a quarter. We actually burr off the exterior, grind up the interior, so these aren't visible residues, these are invisible residues that have soaked into the wall of the pottery. So we grind up that interior and then we analyze it by a technique called high performance liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. And in the case of cacao or chocolate, what we're looking for is primarily one of three organic compounds, uh, theobromine, theophylline, and caffeine, which are all in chocolate. So the cylinders that may that were discovered in Chaco that are now in the museums, those were not exactly tested. So I wanted to be sure that we actually had pre-Hispanic chocolate in the vessels. So we used fragments of sherds that we could grind up. The cylinder jars that we call Chaco and cylinder jars, there are only about 200 of those known anywhere in the world. And most of those come from Pueblo Benito. I think 166 out of all of them come from Pueblo Benito. And then within Pueblo Benito, 111 come from one room called room 28 within the site. And they were excavated in the 1890s by a graduate student from Harvard named George Pepper and Richard Wetherill. 
What about the historical impact 100 years after the cylinder jars were discovered? Generally, I think it demonstrates that archaeological collections in museums continue to have value long after they've been excavated. It's just so much more that we can learn from these old collections. We know that there was some kind of interaction between people in Mesoamerica and people in the Chaco world. Sure. What we don't know is how exactly the chocolate got up into Chaco. It could be that people from Mesoamerica brought it northward into Chaco. It could be that people from Chaco walked south and got chocolate in the south, or it could be that it was passed village to village mm -hmm. on its way up to Chaco Canyon. And these are still all open possibilities that we need to explore more. So we know they drank it, but did they drink it for medicinal purposes? Did they drink it for pleasure? Chocolate has a lot of nutritional value. It's very high in fat, as we all know, uh, and it has quite a number of, of uh, vitamins and minerals as well. The Chacoan diet would have been primarily corn, beans, and squash with occasional meat, and so having chocolate added to that diet would certainly be a benefit. In Mesoamerica, it was consumed primarily in association with ceremonies and important life events. Warriors would drink it before going into battle to give themselves strength. And the, the whole issue of how they were using it really is something that, that I'm trying to work on now. Sure, and do we have any indication that there were actual recipes? Really up until the 1800s, chocolate was not eaten as a solid food, it was a drink. And so we're talking about really chocolate drinks that were a combination of cacao and water and then some number of additives. We are trying to work out what additives were in the cho chocolate in Chaco. Mm -hmm. uh, we know in Mesoamerica that they added uh, substances such as ground corn, mm -hmm. chili was often added to it, anato. And for people in Mesoamerica, the Maya, the Aztec, the froth was considered to be the most delicious part mm -hmm. of the entire drink. So we think that frothing really was an important part of preparing the drink. Chocolate isn't the only thing that's appearing in these vessels, and we're trying to tease out exactly what is happening with that. It looks like in different parts of the Southwest, they may have had access to different kinds of, of um, beverages that had stimulants like caffeine and theobromine in them. Thank you so much for sharing that, Patty. Really interesting stuff. Thank you.